Before we start counting in hundreds, let's remember a few simple facts about fractions. First of all, a fraction represents a part, an equal part of one whole, which means that a fraction, regardless of what it is, is less than one. We know what the parts are based on what we've divided that whole into. And in this case, we're going to be dividing it into one hundredths, which links to dividing by one hundred. So here I have a sheet of paper that represents my whole. All of this together represents one whole. However, when I want to think about it in terms of hundredths, I need to split that whole or divide that whole into 100 pieces. And each of those 100 pieces must be equal in size. When I turn it over, you can see that now my whole has become 100 equal pieces. Now let's think about how we can count each piece and how what we count should be written down. As we've just said, here we have one whole, and it's been divided by 100 to turn it into 100. But how do we count the different numbers? I'm going to show you how to count that using Dean's and covering up some of the 100. Here you can see I'm using a concrete strategy to cover up this whole. Let's see how many hundredths I've covered up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've covered up eight one hundredths with my deans. I write this by writing an eight and then a line and then one hundred underneath the line. The eight tells us how many hundredths I'm showing. The 100 tells us how many pieces there are to make up that one whole. Let me show you a different example. How many hundredths have I covered up here? You can see by counting one, two, three, four, that I've covered up four one hundredths. We need to remember when we write this down that the top number tells us how many is covered up and the amount that we're showing, and the bottom number shows us how many different pieces there are. Four out of 100 pieces are being shown, so I'm showing you four one hundredths. Here you can see we've got every one of the one hundredths covered. So if we were following the same pattern as before, it would look like that. But when working with fractions, when you've got the whole thing covered, we actually just recognise it as one. Remembering that fractions are small parts building up to the number one. Let's take a look at counting in one hundredths using a number line. Here I've got an empty number line that you can see starts at zero and finishes at one. I'm not going to be able to show you the whole, all of the hundreds because the number line won't be big enough, but I've drawn this arrow just to remind us that our number line would eventually finish at one. All fractions are more than zero and less than one and represent a part, as you can imagine from when you used the hundred square. So what would the first number in our hundred line be? It would be one one hundredth. Therefore, the second number would be two one hundredths, followed by three one hundredths, four one hundredths, and so on, all the way to one hundred one hundredths, which is the same as one. I'm going to show you a few number lines now, see if you can work out which numbers are missing.
Here you can see our first number line. You can see it starts at 4 one hundredths and finishes at 12 one hundredths. But what's the missing number? Hopefully you've seen that the space in the number line is here. It's between 6 one hundredths and 8 one hundredths, which means that the answer must be 7 one hundredths. Let's take a look at another example. In this second number line, I've left two spaces. Can you work out where the spaces are and which numbers are missing? Hopefully you've worked out that the spaces are here and here. You can see that it's between 29 one hundredths and 31 one hundredths. Therefore, the answer is 30 one hundredths. And here, it's between 32 one hundredths and 34 one hundredths. So it's 33 one hundredths. When counting one hundredths, we need to remember that you begin with the whole, which equals one. In order to make it one hundredths, you divide that one by 100, which makes 100 equal parts. You count each one of those equal parts as one 100 until you get to 100 100 which equals the whole one.